my chaps. Well done for picking your way through the brochure and getting here. Look, well, there's a lot of venues to choose from. It's easy to make a mistake. There could be 200 people sitting in Tesco's for all I know. <laughs> I had my dinner in a health food restaurant. Now, it's great because you queue for 50 minutes to get something that would do you a lot of good if you could get it out of your back fillings. <laughs> but anyway, no, please, no, please. With the Dutch jugglers in at midnight with no time for them. <laughs> Anyway, I'm Victoria Wood, and I'm here to deliver this evening's lecture, Surgical Stockings, Who Gives a Bugger? <laughs> anyway, thank you for taking the trouble to come out and see me, because you could have stayed in and had a lovely, cosy domestic evening, you young couples, couldn't you? Daphne, why is your Dutch cap on the droning board? <laughs> I don't recommend them Dutch caps. No, I don't, because if they're too small, they make your ears itch. <laughs> You could have stayed in and watched your collection of video nasties, couldn't you? Like your wedding. <laughs> or you could have just stayed in and watched the television. It was the kids from fame tonight. Tonight, the kids from fame panic when they find out that leg warmers cause cancer. <laughs> now, what am I going to entertain you with this evening? Well, for one thing, there's my eccentric dancing. It's very eccentric. But I'm doing it now. That's what it is. No. There's a, there's a thing you probably don't know, there's a thing in this theatre called a show relay system. Which means all the noise you make as you come is relayed backstage to the dressing room, you see. And I can hear it. Because when I'm backstage, getting changed and panicking, thinking, why am I the only person I know with a pop back? <laughs> and, and I sit in this little room that they've given me with my head against the cistern and my feet are on the toilet roll. <laughs> and here you're all chatting as you come in, oh no, these are the wrong tickets. It's the other one I like, the thin one. No, I'm sorry, I don't find humour funny. <gasps> Meg's coming back. Isn't that good news? Meg Mortimer's back to Crossroads. Look, I'll tell you why she left, the real reason why she left. She fell out with the writers, you see, because she rebelled, because they made her do so much, like she'd been mugged and raped and widowed and shot. And then she left because they wanted her to wear stretched denim. That's true. So I'll just fill you in. Um, I started my career on a, on a television talent show in Birmingham called New Faces. That was a very kind little programme, wasn't it? Remember? This was the only TV talent show to have its own stomach pump. <laughs> well, I, I, did, I sang a song on it and Mickey Mouse said it was terrible and Tony Act said it was dreadful and Clifford Davis said it was awful and Arthur Askey said could he have something to sit on because he couldn't see a blind thing. <laughs> no, and then, then I did That's Life. I don't think Cyril Fletcher ever really liked me. I used to see him looking across at me. He could have been looking at something over there, I don't know. <laughs> And then I got this job working for the Arts Council. Now, the Arts Council is a bit like the Town Council, except the decisions they make don't affect anybody. <laughs> they're a bit like the Samaritans, really. I mean, you can, you can go to the Arts Council and you can say, I'm a manic depressive and I can't communicate with people, I feel I've nothing to say, and they'll give you a thousand pounds to write a play about it. Working for them, and it was an alternative cabaret. There was an alternative juggler. He juggled with three copies of The Guardian and a wok. <laughs> And was, we, in the interval, we used to play alternative bingo. It was like ordinary bingo, except when you won, you had to shout out, Properties theft! <laughs> and it was, oh, no, please, I know you're clever, it's all right. Just to show me. Look, I think I better, I better get on now, because I don't think Liberace is going to get here somehow. No, he said he might, because I bumped into him at the British Home Stores. No, by the head squares. Yeah. But anyway, Liber Liberace said to me, Vic, he said to me, they call me Vic. They call me Vic because I'm blue and I bring tears to your eyes. Thank you. No. <laughs> no, Liberace said to me, he said, Lee said that if he was lucky tonight at the laundress and got the hot tumble dryer on the end, he would, <laughs> he would come along. I said, I don't think he's going to make it, so it means I'm going to have to play the piano. Well, I wish you don't mind. I mean, he used to play it lots at one time. But like, still, when people come up to me in the street and say, you're Virginia Wade, aren't you? <laughs> They always wiggle their hands like this. Always. I say, it's a good job I don't play the cello when you think about it, isn't it? <laughs> now, oh, oh, now I have, to, I have to be careful sitting down. I've got these very cheap pants on. I've got them at Safeways, you see. They're in a basket with a lot of tin tomatoes, so I don't know. So if I don't bow at the end, you'll know why. Now, I hope everybody likes opera. <laughs> to say what this was, sorry. Um, this is a little-known Italian aria entitled Don't Bother Buying Us a Port and Lemon as Frieda and I are lesbians. Thank you. 
Now, all we have to do is hope that my voice holds out. So I've, had trouble, I've had trouble with the cold, you see. I've had trouble with um, snot. I've had trouble. No, this is why we come to the festival, so we can use these words, you see. But, um... <laughs> no, I think, I think it's all right. I think I've cured it, because I've got this stuff, Sinex. It's really good, and you put it up your nose, and you go... And it all goes. And you think, well, that's marvellous. Where does it go? <laughs> you take your socks off and you find out. I don't know. <laughs> Even if you've just taken a sleeping pill, had a nasty electric bill, if I can cheer you up, I will. I will do even if you've just swallowed your contact lens or your husband's just joined the wrens. Put it out of your mind. Just for now, have a chuckle. You don't know how near the knuckle I can go. Well, I don't care. I'll go anywhere Even if there's an ulcer upon your gum Or your pants have gone up your bum If I can't make you glad you've come I will do even if You've not laughed since that Wednesday when Deirdre said she was leaving Ken Put it out of your mind Just for now it's so simple You don't know how show your dimple It's nice to laugh You must agree Change the key Even if your idea of a naughty spree Is cold cocoa on Radio 3 If I can't make you laugh with me I will do even if You have only two weeks to live Or you voted conservative Put it out of your mind Ho, ho, ho I've been thinking Hee, hee, hee I've been drinking What we need An interlude Nothing crude I'm trained, you know trained to handle Alsatians. Who'll be first with the jollier? Could be worse, could be mollier. Let's go mad and have some fun. It can be done, even if you are sitting there saying no. We only laugh at Marceau, Marceau. If I can, come and find your row. I'll get you, even if you can't laugh because you've lost the knack and you just want your money back. Put it out of your Excuse me. I'm just having a bit of trouble with my playtex discontinued. No, I just... No, a terrible thing's bras. I read this thing once in a magazine, and it was a test to see whether you needed to wear one or not. And the test was if you could hold a pencil underneath, you see. That was very depressing for me. Yeah. I could hold a small branch of W.H. Smith under one of mine. <laughs> I mean, why are bras meant to lift and separate, anyway? Well, if God had meant them to be lifted and separated, they'd have given us one on each shoulder, surely. <laughs> it's magazines for you, see, just set you worrying. And they'll copy off each other, they're all the same. If Cosmopolitan comes out one month with an article, Orgasms and How to Get Them, Woman's Realm will be there the week after, Orgasms and How to Knit Them. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, now listen, shh, listen, I'll tell you, I tell you the thing in a magazine I like the best, and it's the back page, it's the problem page, and it's the bit at the bottom where they don't print the letter. Just the answer. I like that. Dear Puzzled of Essex, no, this is not normal behaviour. Tell your husband those things for putting tea towels into. And I tell you, I read, I read a really good thing this morning. Now, you're reading too much into that. Listen to this. Now, I read a good thing this morning. It was, it was a very serious article in Cosmopolitan. It was called Sexual Harassment at Work. Is it a problem for the self-employed? <laughs> we have a little love song for you now. It's been translated into many languages, ladies and gentlemen. It's been recorded by Charles Aznavour, Julio Iglesias, Jockey Wilson. <laughs> I hope you like it. Nobody else does. They said our love would never work. They said that when I met you, well, they were right. It's over now. But still I won't forget you. When the next door neighbor's yelling, when all day I keep on smelling old men's max, or when my ears are blocked with wax, when conversation turns to tax 
see Derby, I will think of you. When I see a child dismember insects, or when I remember how I feel the day after an Indian meal, or when I see a jellied eel, my darling, I will think of you. Or when they ask me why I like Beryl Cook or David Hockney Or when I think of Dick Van Dyke Trying to do a Cockney accent When the shop is out of ties When above my head there flies a jumbo jet When all my towels are dripping wet Or when my pink blancmange won't set My darling I will think of you When my aunt says time for shut eye when i wash up dinner but i get no thanks whenever i smell septic tanks whenever i see two short planks my darling i will think of you Of all the letters that make me ill, the rates demand the telephone bill. The ones that bring me really low are the ones from girls I used to know. The girls at school you didn't like much have a terrible urge to keep in touch. Those of whom you were not fond relentlessly wield the Basildon bond. Remember Bobby Field? I won the drama shield. An embryo actress and terribly thin, very ambitious, determined to win. Auditioned for Rada and didn't get in. Funny how things turn out. I got my equity card, but the life was awfully hard. I advertised cat food for years, which was hell. Did Equus at Windsor, which didn't go well. And I asked for my key at the Crossroads Motel. Funny how things turn out. Though my kids are three, four, and five, I still keep my mind alive. I've started to write and I'm making some headway with humorous verses for Radio Medway. My faith in myself is still devout. Whenever I find I've a minute to kill, I drive to the hospital up on the hill and sing learn and low to the mentally ill. Funny how things turn out. Remember Jennifer Hill? I was the first on the pill. A bit of a hippie and into tie-dye. Trek to Morocco, got ever so high. Then I married a man from ICI. Funny how things turn out. We moved to Tufnell Park with a cat called Muriel Spark. I came off the pill because it made me depressed. I hated the cap and the coil and the rest. So I've three in the infants and two on the breast. Funny how things turn out. Now I sit from dawn to dusk, covered in snot and Farley's rusk. I look back on the days of my youth and my passion, wishing that loon pants would come back in fashion, and wondering what it's all about. The doctor's advice has been largely ignored. We did try the sheath, but we got very bored. So I'm writing to you from the labour ward. Funny how things turn out. Remember Brenda James? I was captain of games. I practised all day till my muscles were sore. Hockey was super and boys were a bore. Didn't use Tampax till 74. Funny how things turn out. At college I read sport, but socially things were fraught. I refused to have sex with a man called Dez. He went around calling me Brenda the Les. So I slept with a girl in the hall of res. Funny how things turn out. I came out at a lesbian's ball, didn't feel glad to be gay at all. Whoever said that Tom Robinson was it, I couldn't agree and got back in the closet. Then saw the light and had no doubt. I took all my savings and just disappeared and found a nice doctor who said, you're not weird. Now I'm Jonathan James with a wonderful beard. Funny how things turn out. I have, I have a confession to make to you. I'm not Scottish. Thank you. Now, I've travelled to be with you from the cosmopolitan seaside resort of Morecambe. Now, for those of you who don't know where it is, if you're English, it's on the left as you go up. So, so if you're Scottish, it's on the right as you come down. I suppose. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's above Liverpool. Now, I know Liverpool, the Beatles, Ferry Cross the Mersey, people talking like that. But it's above there, and it's below the Lake District, which is lakes, mountains, people in the cagoules talking like that because they've just come up from Liverpool. 
You know they say, see Naples and die. See Morecambe and feel as if you already have. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a very jolly place. It's, it's one of the few resorts where you can get a kiss me quick hearing aid. <laughs> it's twin town is Auschwitz. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's full of little old men going paddling. By the time they got the knots in the rankings, the tide's gone out. <laughs> Little old ladies walk them down the prom with those funny hats on that say, Kiss me quick, but wait till I get my teeth in. <laughs> and there's a pier. Well, it's like a council house on a stick. And it's got a waxworks on it. Well, it's four shop dummies in demob suits labelled Buck's Fizz. But, you know, they're doing their best. And there's a fair. Well, it's two rides and a liniment stall. And it's got this huge big wheel and it goes around really slowly. And there's antimacassars on the back of each seat. <laughs> and there's a ghost train. It's really fast and it goes through Tesco's. And they all go, Woo! Have you seen the person put a fry, didn't you? <laughs> I tell you, things are very wild in Morecambe on a Saturday night. You get old men dipping the Garibaldis into another woman's Horlicks. <laughs> Little old ladies grabbing fellas as they come out the gents, get them in a dark corner and show them photographs of the son in law in Australia. And they dance, they do the hokey. That's like the hokey cokey, you nod off in the middle. <laughs> but that's the summer, I mean, it's much quieter in the winter. The proms deserted, littered with torn pages from the watchtower and empty sterilant tins. Even the gifty shop is shutty. <laughs> That's the one with the sign up. You don't have to be mad to work here, just old, deaf and incredibly irritating. Because <laughs> we've got clubs in Morecambe, we've got the Sunset Jigsaw Club. It's formed in 1953 and they still haven't finished the sky. And gymnastics for the hard of hearing. Don't swing on that! Hey! Ow! And the old-time dancing, speciality, the Union Jack Tango. It's called that because they've got white hair, red faces and blue lips if they do it twice. <laughs> but last winter, last winter I had to resort to evening classes. There's a few things you could do. There was good grooming for the over-90s, handling your pension, coping with cystitis, and, and keep fit beginners. I've got to do that. I get all dressed up, red leotard, red tights. And I go running across the road, looking not unlike a piece of eager salami. And the whole place is buzzing with activity, which is very odd in a town where the tide only bothers to come in once a week. And they're all jumping about with rope ladders and chest expanders and skipping ropes. I said, excuse me, is this Keep Fit Beginners? They said, no, it's Advanced Creative Macrame. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> but in the distance, I can hear Manuel and his music of the mountains playing Viva España, the twanging of brass straps, the bursting of varicose veins. And there they are, Keep Fit Beginners, all wearing these beige boucle crimpline cardies and those stretch pants with the bits that go under the foot <laughs> and those elasticated slippers that curl up and try to bite your hand when you take them off <laughs> well i'm stood at the back because if you got the front you get landed with chair duty or mat stacking and i don't like that so i'm at the back leaning on an armchair well, i thought it was an armchair it turned out to be the lady mayoress in a pair of culottes <laughs> <laughs> So I looked to see what the first exercise is, and it's this. But I thought, that's very easy. I must be fitter than I thought. And then I realised they're not doing an exercise, they're waiting for something, see. No, 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 they're waiting for the boss, Marjorie. Now Marjorie's one of Morecambe's most sophisticated and glamorous hostesses. And she gives parties, she wears these very low-cut dresses, you know. She looks like she's standing in a carrier bag. <laughs> and we have little things on sticks, you know, like sprouts. Anyway, <laughs> In she comes, Marjorie. She's got jet black hair. It's very lacquered. It's like a 78 with a parting. <laughs> and she's got a tweed body stocking, leopard skin trues, one gold strappy sandal, one hush puppy slit for the bunion. <laughs> and she puts on the first record and we're off. Oh, blimey. Bend this, stretch that, get smashed in the face with a flying charm bracelet. I end up in this ludicrous position with my head between Marjorie's legs. I thinking, I must trim our privet. But then, no, and then... <laughs> then I had to stop going. You know, I've got this thing wrong with me, you see. I've got this trouble, you know, downstairs. No, either because we all had to drink out of the one Tupperware, or because my leotard was two sizes too small. No, because you used to say to me, snip that crotch, you'd be a foot taller. <laughs> so... So I don't do keep fit anymore. No, I do coping with cystitis. <laughs> She married early, it was the thing to do 
smile for the photo like a dream come true he said he loved her forever as if it's a shame he never promised not to bore her stiff only the lonely would ever dispute what i'm saying take it or leave it you better believe what i'm saying it is a crime to be stuck by the side of a person you don't even like tell me what could be worse than a life full of nothing it's stupid it's painful don't do it her heart sank when she saw him he smelled of smoke she knew every movement she'd heard every joke they made love with the lights off and nothing said and the thought that she could change things never entered her head only the lonely would ever dispute what i'm saying take it or leave it you better believe what i'm saying why should you miss out on laughter on joy and elation unless you are counting on reincarnation it's one life and one chance it's easily ruined don't do it she had friends round for coffee nearly every day she was smiling and desperate but didn't like to say counted pills in a bottle and dared herself heard his car stop in the driveway put them back on the shelf only the lonely would ever dispute what i'm saying take it all in you better believe what I'm saying Why bother smiling in public and privately scheming You're better off shouting and kicking and screaming It's soft to give in, to give up, to go under Don't do it Don't do it Why bother smiling in public and privately scheming You're better off shouting and kicking and screaming it's up to give in to give up to go under don't do it thank you <laughs> thank you excuse me coughing <clears throat> i don't smoke but i go to a lot of barbecues now, i hope those people who do still smoke are taking notice of the government health warnings. It's a good one now. It's because they're too pissed to light their cigarettes, probably. <laughs> Time plays tricks on one and all. Our ends are split, our bosoms fall. Well, this is, after all, what we find. Time and time, let's not forget. We'll kill you up, I'll get you wet This is it, this is life, never mind But some girls don't know when they're beaten They battle like old kinker newts To give every wrinkle, each crow's foot and crinkle the boots You swim for health, you splash about The chlorine makes your hair fall Serves you right, this is it, what we find. You rub your necks before you sleep with cream that's made from bits of sheep. Is this wise? Are you mad? Is it kind? Be like the old girls down the local. Oh, halter neck, grim, clean and gin. Red lipstick and dentures, they still have adventures joining. You try sex with a younger man, he's never heard of steel ice span. What a blow, what a drag, what we find. As time moves on, it leaves its clues. The tramps are wearing platform shoes. Time's winged bus is just one stop behind oh please give up this painful fight against grey hair cellulite please enjoy what you are ask me how live for now live for now live for now
I was leaning over the wash basin last night. Well, I'd been drinking. <laughs> and I was just stood there thinking, what a funny word Twyford's is. And I thought, I feel bad, but it's not as bad as school. It's not as bad as that day in 1966 when we had to hold our purses up in prayers to show that they weren't in our blazer pockets in the cloakroom, tempting thieves. And my little writing on, and on one side it said, I love Elia Kuriakim. Yes, cast your mind back, girls. And on the other side, it said, Mrs. Coakley does it with dogs, which got me into a lot of trouble, as you can imagine. <laughs> and you see, you see, I went to a mixed school, all girls, you know, and half of them really common, and half of them really posh. And the common ones used to take drugs. They'd take all these pills in the dinner hour, and spend all afternoons on the toilets with the doors open, laughing. <laughs> and these other girls didn't know what was going on, you know, because they were so posh, they didn't know what drugs were. I was so posh, didn't know what toilets were. I was, I was so... I wanna be 14 again When sex was just called number 10 And I was up to 7 and a half When boys were for love and girls were for fun You burst out laughing if you saw a nun Sophistication was a sports car and a chiffon scarf I wanna be 14 again Tattoo myself with a fountain pen Pretend to like the taste of rum and coke Chuck my school hat in a bush Spit on my mascara brush by consulate And teach myself to smoke I wanna be 14 again Free rides on the waltzes of the fairground Meant for a promise of a snog The last night of the fair French kissing as the kiosk shut Behind the generators with your coconuts The coloured lights reflected In the brill cream on his hair I wanna be 14 again For all the things I didn't know then When I was funny I was famous I was never ignored I was a crazy girl I had a laugh I had Elia Kuhuriakin's autograph I had no idea You could wake up Feeling bored This is a love song it's an old man's love song. Made your breakfast this morning like any old day and then I remembered I threw it away I found an old photo In the kitchen drawer Here by the seaside During the war You're laughing at something And the wind's in your hair You were ever so slim then And your hair was still fair And I wanted to kiss you But you always laughed And I wanted to tell you But I felt that Still we got married, I was tight Then we both got embarrassed, played Romeo all night I remember the baby and his sticky out ears But I can't single out things over the years In women's surgical by your bed I knew that I loved you, but I never said I brought you black magic and they said you died I had a cup of tea there, came home and cried I have to go back to the hospital to collect your things Your nighty, your books and your wedding ring Made your breakfast this morning like any old day And then I remembered and I threw it away Made your breakfast this morning like any old day And then I remembered and I threw it away
Thank you. You ever use this microphone to smoke consulate? Yes. I tell you, I got really depressed the other day. It was really bad. It was my own fault, though. I should never have watched Terry and June. No, I felt so bad. I phoned the Samaritans, and this really nice woman answered, and we had a good chat. And I said, I think the Samaritans are wonderful. And she said, this isn't the Samaritans, this is CNA outsize department. <laughs> anyway, I moped around the house a bit, and I put on the television, Mr. and Mrs. And I knew it was in a bad way. I found myself actually caring. <laughs> Whether a man liked his wife in trues, slacks, or didn't really like her at all. <laughs> so I switched off, and I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to see my friend. She's suffering from postnatal depression. Her eldest child's 15, but like, they've never got on. You know. <laughs> She's really middle class, my friend. She's got everything. She's got the Jane Fonda workout book, and a ceramic hob, and a daughter with anorexia, everything. <laughs> anyway, I went to see her. She lives in this old place that they're doing up. It's a converted mill chimney. <laughs> no. The rooms are very small, but they have nice high ceilings. You know? <laughs> Anyway, it turned out she was depressed, too, about the veins on her legs. She'd had shorts on the other day, and her husband had used her left thigh to direct someone to the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, she, said she, was, she said she was thinking of having plastic surgery. It was a Sunday time special offer. No, it was good. It was in the colour supplement. You got a nose job, a Guernsey, and 12 porcelain thimbles. I thought that was good. Though I, I did think for that money it can't possibly be a good Guernsey. I didn't tell you. Anyway, she was getting ready for a posh barbecue that night, so I helped to get ready, helped to wrap after eight minutes in baking foil. <laughs> anyway, then I left. I thought, I know what I'll do. Cheer myself up. I'll get on a train and go to London, because the doctor had recommended a change of lead poisoning. Anyway. I got a ticket without too much trouble. I gave them my car and a couple of Rembrandts. No, I was looking forward to it. I hadn't been on the train for ages. But I knew what it was going to be like because I'd seen all those adverts with Jimmy Savile. You know, all the happy families and the helpful guards and everything. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. No. It's the sort of trip that made you wish you were driving to an important business meeting in a blizzard with no windscreen wipers. <laughs> I knew what it was going to be like. When I got on the train, I saw these tiny little old ladies tapping big, fat, drunken Scottish football fans on the shoulder, saying, could they possibly be thrown out of the windows now? <laughs> I sat down next to a man who was making a model of the fourth bridge from empty lager cans. <laughs> and opposite me, was a woman with a blocked nose, a bad cold, an itchy bosom, and no inhibitions. <laughs> she was eating an individual fruit pie by sucking the filling up through the hole in the middle. <laughs> I didn't mind her picking her nose. Just her putting a bogey on one side to eat later than in the night. Anyway, then the guard came on over the tannoy, how they do, you know. He said, the train will be three hours late owing to points failure and repair work and somebody not bothering to switch something on at Houston. It was quite nice. He gave us a nice apology and a couple of songs and a George Formby impression. <laughs> <laughs> and we eventually got into London. I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll go and do my shopping at the new Covent Garden precinct. And the whole place was teeming with jugglers and mimes and all kinds of street performers. In fact, I bent over to tie my shoelace and got my own series on Channel 4. <laughs> and I, I did a bit of shopping. I went to the body shop. I said, have you got this in a size 8? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, when I came out, when I came out, I missed my train. So I thought, well, I'll get the shuttle. So I got a cab to Heathrow. And the driver was a typical London cabbie, you know, he hated the traffic and he didn't like other drivers and he felt that Ionesco had been basically misinterpreted. <laughs> anyway, I got on the plane. It was quite an old plane. I sat next to the rear gunner. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just feeling all right when the air hostess said, welcome aboard, the in-flight movie will be a remake of Love Story, starring Terry and June. 
Well, I don't remember what happened then, but they tell me that I ran up and down the aisle of the plane trying to overdose on non-dairy creamer, but I don't remember. But, <laughs> but I woke up in a mental hospital, and they said the main thing to do is to keep busy while you're here. What do you want to do? Make raffia mats or take part in a documentary. <laughs> well, I escaped from there by knotting sheets together to make a moped. And when... <laughs> And I got home, and there's a letter on the mat, and it says, Congratulations, Mr. Wood. You have won a macrobiotic dinner for one in Covent Garden with Terry and June. And then I shot myself. Thank you. Dear God, I have got many faults. At paying bills, I could be speedier. I always want to squeeze other people's blackheads. And I can't spell encyclopedia. I have an unnatural predilection for Cadbury's cream eggs. And I can hardly force my socks on over the hairs on my legs. My watch says five to four all day, because I keep forgetting to wind it. And I do not always leave the bathroom, as I would wish to find it. But although I am incapable of folding up a map, I'm awfully glad you made me me, and not some other chap. a student with a spotty neck living off Mr. Kipling cakes and ready breath puking after pints and one of the boys Marx is not a man to idolise just the place from which your mother buys your nasty khaki corduroys every Sunday sitting in the gloom of the union television room watching songs of praise and feeling dismayed Bedsit evenings mouldy smelling boiling the bag on the baby belly and all those foreign students that just can't get laid Those awfully jolly girls at the poly Drinking cold coffee half the night Whose hair is thickest, whose jokes are sickest Which lucky girl has found a drug that clears up thrush the quickest Glad I'm not a huge celebrity, what a mad existence that must be Just take Margaret Thatcher choosing a Mac Round C and A, you can hear her whining It must be blue with a bulletproof lining Preferably impervious to nuclear attack Take Farrah Fawcett Can't wear a corset Can only eat once a week No Coca-Colas Cause of her molars Gets up at half past five to piss about with Carmen Rollers Makes her money from romance, virgins, health foods, honey She can't just do what she likes She can't say, book of the ginseng, shoot the poodle Bung this a Mackison and a pot noodle My next romantic novel is about two dykes Dear God, I've got many faults I am not sensible or thrifty I get my Brillo pads from Habitat They're not worth £6.50 I start a dirty joke When I should not have begun one I swore I'd never do an advert And I was bleeding on and done one I'm not very good looking, and my skin is awfully oily. With open pores, it's not so much a face, more of a doily. I may just be the result of some of you long mishap, but I'm awfully glad you made me be a nice some other chap. guide. Now before I show you around, I'll just fill you in on a few details as we call them. As you can see, we're standing in the hall of the Howarth Parsonage, where Howarth's parson, the Reverend Bronte, lived here with his daughters, the famous Bronte sisters. Now alas, no longer with us. But of course they have left us the novels, which I've not read, being more of a Dick Francis nut. <laughs> now, if you'd like to pass by me into the parlour, whoops, my my vaccination, now, this is what was called in those days a parlour, somewhat similar to our lounge-type sitting room affair in modern terminology. Now, I'm afraid the wallpaper on the walls isn't the original wallpaper of the original period to which we're referring to. It's actually Laura Ashley. But I think it does give some idea of what life must have been like in a blustery old Yorkshire community of long ago. Now, the portrait on the wall is actually of Charlotte Bronte, one of the famous Bronte sisters. And, of course, to us, she may seem a rather gloomy-looking individual. 
But you must remember that these days she'd have had a perm or blusher. Or I suppose even drugs would have helped to maintain a more cheerful attitude. In fact, she'd probably not be dead if she was alive today. <laughs> now, if you can all budge back into the hall, that chap, we're going through into the Reverend Bronte's study. Now, this is a typical study in which to do studying. As you can see, there's a table, a chair. Oh, my poncho, I've been looking for that. And, uh, I like to imagine this elderly old gentleman sitting hunched over a sermon, probably thinking, where's my cocoa? I suppose those darn girls are in the middle of a chapter, something like that. He may have been thinking, we just can't be sure. <laughs> of course, he died eventually, unfortunately. We must remember this is an extremely exposed part of the United Kingdom. I mean, it's May now, and I'm still having to stick that polo neck under my bolero. And I think, you know, I think that in days of yore, those elderly persons did tend to give up and die that little bit more easily with not having bingo and such like to give them a purpose in life. <laughs> now on the table, we see the Reverend Bronte's gloves. They tell us such a lot about him. He had two hands and... <laughs> he wasn't missing any fingers. We think, we think these gloves were knitted by one of the famous Bronte sisters. I suppose their brother Branwell couldn't knit and... Anyway, being an alcoholic, he'd never have been able to cast on, you see. <laughs> well, he might have been able to cast on, he'd never have been able to cast off. Now, if we can all hutch back into the hall and up the stairs, that's right, stopping at the lobby window, we're looking out over the graves to the hills beyond. And fairly clearly, in the distance, we can hear the wind weathering. Now, that's an old Yorkshire word. Some other old Yorkshire words are parking and fettle. Now, if you're carrying up the stairs, that's right. Now, the room we're now standing in was originally Charlotte's mother's bedroom. In fact, Charlotte's mother died in here, and Charlotte died in here, too. So better not stay too long. <laughs> That's just my joke. Now, over there, in that glass case, you'll see what we call a day dress. That is a dress worn in the day, not at night. We think belonging to Anne or Emily, presumably not Branwell. Unless he had more problems and histories prepared to tell us. A few dates for the date-minded. Um, the Bronte family moved here sometime in the 19th century and lived here for quite a number of years. <laughs> now, as I say, Charlotte died in this room. Those are her slippers. And I like to imagine her in this room with her slippers on, dying. <laughs> now, if you go through, through the far door, that's right, yes, do move my moped. Yes. <laughs> This room was at one time Branwell's bedroom. Now, I think people tend to forget about Branwell, that he was a fairly artistic person himself. Of course, he was lazy, conceited, and a dipsomaniac, so these days he'd probably been a television producer. <laughs> well, that's it, and can I just remind you that if anybody would like a souvenir to take home with them as a souvenir, we have a Bronte video games, body warmers, acrylic mitts, pedestal mats, feminine deodorants, and novelty tea strainers. Snacks and light refreshments are available in the Heathcliff Nosher Bar. So do feel free to sample our popular Bronte burgers. Or for the fibre conscious, our Branwell Bronte burgers. Oh, finally, I have a little message for the Yorkshire Heritage Coach Party. Could they please reconvene at two in the car park, ready for this afternoon's trip, which is round at three dark satanic mills, Emmerdale Farm and Nora Batty's front room. Thank you. <laughs> Now, we're going to have a jolly chorus song now. Hope you're all going to join in. It's called, I'm not worried about unemployment because there's going to be a nuclear war. <laughs> no, no, let's be optimistic. Um, look, I'll tell you one way to cheer things up at home, girls. If you're in bed with your chap and these things are going on, a good way to get a laugh, right, is to wait until things have got very passionate, stop dead, and say, did you get those bin liners? Now, this song is dedicated to my deep interest in the act of physical lovemaking. It's very short. Now, when I was younger, people used to stay the night with me. It's before I got my Holly Hobby vibrator, I think. Yeah. No. No, because I used to sleep with people. I mean, you do these silly things when you're young. I mean, I used to take pills, but I was too young. I was the only one who had to take them crushed up in jam. <laughs> but, Whenever anybody stayed the night with me, I used to put this bolster down the middle of the bed. There was nothing odd about that, but mine had broken glass stuck in the top. <laughs> but I think, it, I think it stemmed from this unfortunate experience I had with my first boyfriend, you see. 
he had a sex manual, but he was dyslexic. Not terribly satisfactory. <laughs> you know, I was in bed and he was looking for the vinegar. <laughs> you have to explain that one to me because I don't understand that one. <laughs> I've had it up to here with men. Perhaps I should phrase that again. Been wearing pretty dresses, floral, taking contraceptives since I don't remember when. I've had it up to here with blokes and all their stupid, dirty jokes. It's not a lot of fun to hear the one about the nun, the marrow, the banana, and John Noakes. It's not that I expect true love or gazing at the stars above. If as a person they'd acknowledge me, not just bits of gynecology. Or if they'd just take off the rubber glove To start your evenings off in Lurex Finish them with biscuits doesn't really turn me up I'll stay at home in my pyjamas Watch a programme about llamas I won't need any lip gloss I won't need any Amplex Just Ovaltine and buns for one I've had it up to here with sex Those nylon vests and hairy necks They expect you to be flighty And they act like God Almighty Cos they've got a cock and they can mend a flex and when they proudly strip and pose, I want to say, what's one of those? They tend to feel a failure if you don't love their genitalia. <laughs> Why you should, God only knows. <laughs> no more nights of drinking, nodding, smiling, thinking, Jesus, when can I go home? No more struggling in taxis, in voxels, zips and maxis, with stupid little bleeders, with all the charming manners of the average garden gnome. And when they're down to socks and grin, you know it's time to get stuck in. Full of self-congratulation, they expect a combination of all the Corbett, Raquel Welsh and Rin Tin Tin. I've not had an encounter yet that didn't leave me cold and wet. I'd be happier, I know, if we could only go from the foreplay straight to the cigarettes. I'll finish and just say again. Definitely had it, well very nearly had it, had it nearly up to here with men. in front of 11 pairs of 
trousers keeping my mother waiting in the Range Rover, do you? <laughs> but to take my analogy a stage further, Derek Bainbridge claims the official uniform is expensive and a great strain on the parents of the poorer children. Well, it seems to me if people's fathers took the trouble to pass exams in accountancy and business management like some people's fathers, <laughs> they would have plenty of money for new blazers and other things such as holiday flatlets and fwingy roller. <laughs> but I digress. Derek Bainbridge remarks, we should be allowed to express our individuality through our clothing. Well, I'm perfectly happy to express mine on Saturdays and in the school holidays. And I'm not the only person who thinks that, like that. Like that. <laughs> and furthermore, if some people cannot be trusted to sign the punishment book without drawing private parts on it, <laughs> I don't really think they can be trusted to dress suitably for school, do you? I think we can all imagine what would happen if certain people arrived in backless sweaters only to find the heating was off due to education cuts. I think we'll find that certain people were calling to other certain people to borrow their monitors' cardigans, don't you? A hypothesis which, as Hamlet said, is devoutly not to be wished. Finally, to sum up, let me just give you three reasons why I think you should vote for me against the motion. One, I think school uniform promotes a sense of identity and team spirit. Two, it prevents discrimination on the grounds of class and economic differences. Three, my father is now the sole supplier of uniform to this school. <laughs> and anyone who votes for me will get a discount. Thank you. I'm going to finish now with two songs, first one and then the other. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the first one is dedicated to the shy people, the timid, the insecure, those delicate young men whose only ambition is to grow up and be a king singer. <laughs> Worried couples who won't have a baby in case it grows up and can't find a parking space. The lonely ones who go up and get themselves run over as a way of meeting people people who are going to boutiques and find the only thing that fits them is the cubicle curtains. <laughs> this song is for them. Outside, I'm desperate to please. I say the things you want to hear, I'm kind. I don't complain to waiters. I'm keen to be well liked. I smile a lot and never speak my mind. But inside, I'm bursting with ill will. And one day the veneer will start to cry. First I'll stop the smiling and then the little lies. Then maybe I'll go mad and answer back. Whenever they say, are you happy with your hair? I'll say, I think the perm was a mistake. Looks absolutely foul. The best bit is the towel. I refuse to pay to look like Charlie Drake. Whenever he says, How was it for you? I'm going to say it was not good enough. It made a cervical smear seem like a fun idea. And by the way, your navel's full of fluff. Whenever they say, Did you enjoy the meal? I'll say, Your waiter has a CSE in slow. The soup was freezing cold, and the strawberries had mould, and the cock o van reminded me of both. Whenever they say, well, aren't we having fun? Barbara's parties always go so well. I'll say, I'm bored out of my brains. I've had more fun down drains. I'm going to slash my wrists and read the White Hotel. And when the bastards say, did you enjoy the show? I'll say, I did not like it. It was crap. I was really, really bored. It should win a fringe award. They had to wake me up to make me clap. So, whatever they say, just say something back. It's time the social liars went on strike. Truth is just the job. Make trouble with your gob. You just tell them what the hell. Yes, you just tell them what the hell. You just tell them.
thank you. I'm going to finish now. Thank you very much for coming and staying and being a nice audience because they're, they're a bit funny last night with me. I think there was a deputation in. Feminists against laughing. <laughs> well, you've been very nice. Thank you very much. And this song is about a little boy doing music and movement to the wireless in 1959. Thank you. It's bad enough at school without the wireless We have it nearly every afternoon It's something called music and movement Where you run about to a tune I wouldn't mind if it was cops and robbers But the lady tells you what you have to be And I'm only a mixed infant So it isn't up to me And now we're in the hall with the wireless on With this woman saying what we have to do be as tall as an house, be as tiny as a mouse, I'm knackered, it's only half past two. It's been an horrible day at school so far, me best friend didn't come. And I got demoted from Milk Monitor, cause they heard me saying boom. <laughs> and then I got in trouble in the playground, had the slipper twice off Mrs. Stock. Cause Linda Morris tried to kiss me, and I put me welly down a frock. And now we're in the hall with the wireless on Going on and only I'm at a rest Pretend the day is sunny or a funny little bunny Have you ever seen a rabbit in a vest? Hey, hey, I'm making this Christmas tree out of lolly sticks To take home to my mum But it's gone all crumply and sticky Cos I'm not very good with gum And shepherd's pie and cabbage for dinner And it wasn't even hot and spotted dick and custard, old dick and not a lot of spots. And now we're in the hall with the wireless on, our teacher's joining in, she's gone all red. She's the moon and we're the sea, a big scab on me knee. I'll save it for tonight when I'm in bed. I never did too well I was never asked to play the same plays twice I was paid my final wage Then an agent came backstage And gave to me some brilliant advice Pretend to be northern Just smile and act dense Just sing something northern It doesn't have to make sense Make a list of northern cliches And you can't go wrong Put in any order You've got a northern song You just go tripe clogs Go into the dogs Wigan and Blackpool tram Brass bands, butties in your hands Whip it to next door's man Clock cap, anky full of snap Shawls and scabby knees Hot pot, seven to a cot Headscarves and mushy peas I threw away my skin tight suits and I bought some heavy boots and I wore a woolly shawl on my sunflowery. I spent neat after neat <laughs> watching Coronation Street and studying the works of L.S. Lowry. Now I'm fully northern and it works a treat. Spent half the year in Preston and the other in Crete and buying a bungalow in Weybridge. I must have made enough brass money from my northern song. I've just got right, man, eating out the pan, tanners and threepenny bits. Pram wheels, good old bracer fields, braces, bugs and nits. Fish, chips, cycle clips, gaslight and games in the street. Notice like gravy at the back of the bread, I am root. Fog, smog, sitting on the bog, cobbles in the morning mist. Park drive, then a 45 for a backstreet debauchness. It's terrible. <laughs> 